Casper's back. Casper. Oh my gosh. You know what, you know what I've been hearing a lot about and I would really like to get one is a Casper, uh, pillow wall. Yeah. I've heard Mike and, and Ming talking about the Casper pillow. They, they love them. Mm hmm. Pillow biters. <laughs> the both of them. <laughs> <laughs> the Casper they, said. Not them. only, not only they, are they comfortable, they taste great. Michael Ming said. <laughs> they come to work with fucking mouthful of feathers. <laughs> Look like they ate a fucking duck. Um, a sleep brand that created one perfect mattress sold directly to consumers, eliminating commission-driven inflated prices, uh, which means they've cut out the guy who makes his living selling mattresses. I guess. Uh, how do they do it? Q. What? In addition to the mattress, Casper also offers an adaptive pillow and soft, breathable sheets. If you go to casper.com slash TESD and use the promo code, uh, you're going to get $50 towards any mattress purchase. They can cost well over $1,500, but they cost $500 for a twin-size mattress, $600 for a twin XL, $750 for a full, $850 for a queen, $950 for a king. That's pretty cheap for a king, right? Very. I, I tell you, I mean, long story short, I sleep on a Casper every night. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that if it wasn't good. I wouldn't do it. And I tell I tell my family, it's the most comfortable mattress I've ever slept on. It's not bullshit. Huh. All right. Well, there you get it, man. It's awesome. That's not bullshit. Casper, you can use that if you want. It's completely risk-free, Walt. Free delivery, free returns, 100-night home trial. Do you find uh, on your Casper that like when you get busy, is it better than your regular springy bed? No springs for anyone to hear. Uh, you can yes. fucking go to town all night. Yeah, that, the, yeah the neighbors uh, are not aware <laughs> of my – They're thankful. Your dirty doings. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, your mattress, your your neighbors won't know. Let's say you got – let's say you're a, a everything, fiend for – Everything fucking, you do on a Casper is better. Yeah? Everything. I thought we were doing like straight 30 second reads. He just said the movie just started. Did it okay. start? Yeah, he said the movie started. All right, so go get a Casper. It's Casper.com slash T E S D. Brian Johnson from the Newsly News. <laughs> 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 Question, Mr. Flanagan. <laughs> Like, be a little manly. Stop bitching and crying and whining and all this shit. Um, what is the, What does the Bible say about stooling? You know that, you know that would be that's the devil's fucking. It's the devil's playground back there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, Steve, Dave. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Tell Him, Steve, Dave. Number 299. 299, Walt. 299, Q. An episode away from 300. How do you feel? How do you feel with this upcoming fucking magic? Well, the excitement in this room is palpable. Yeah. Well, we've been around all day. We're recording (laughs) this between shooting for... The yoga hosers thing and going to the yoga hosers thing. Can't help but notice that that Gidham's not here. He's at the premiere. Thank Usually you. he's just he's just like a like a yapping dog around to be on Tell Him Steve Day, but today he's found he's found something bigger for himself. Well, he's at a premiere. Yeah, there was, he was there was a red carpet. And, you know, yeah. you were on the red carpet, and yeah, he had he had to walk it. He wanted to uh, take his uh, stroll down it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so today's supposed to be an overkill. Oh, is it's it supposed to be? Mm-hmm. It's not. Uh, maybe it is. Do I got something? Maybe. Uh, maybe oh, not does. only do I have an overkill oh, wall, good. Oh. but maybe I have some uh, something that doesn't have to do with disappearing children. <laughs> it has to do with that in itself. Is yeah. worthy of an overkill. I think. What we? I think I might have something overkill worthy. Yeah. A cultish leader of sort. Is that overkill? I'd say so. Cult. Cultish. 
Some may say cult. Oh, yeah. Yeah, talk about this. I, I saw on Twitter that you watched a documentary. There's a documentary on uh, Tony Robbins, the, the life coach. You know who he is? Yeah. Very well, for the first, I mean, it's a two hour documentary. They didn't need to make it that long. But uh, for the first half of it, it's a fascinating look at this guy and his business. And I guess two, three times a year, he has this seven day seminar, six day seminar, and it's a 12 hour day every day. And it, they made it appear like he's on stage for the entire 12 hours. I don't know how realistic that is. You know what I'm saying? For one man to speak for 12 straight hours? For 12 straight hours, seven hours for seven, six days in a row. Um, and you get, You would need to be on some drugs to do that, wouldn't you? I feel like he is somewhere in there on drugs. I don't oh. know. They don't say it, but I mean, he, he's like bouncing on a trampoline just before he goes out to the audience and he gets that high energy and his music blasting and like the whole crowd is like going crazy and dancing. And then he comes out. And he just starts like going through the crowd. He's got like one of those mics that you, you normally wear on. <laughs> and he's just like, you know, and he's dispensing advice and, and stuff like that. And I was struck by something is these people fucking worship this guy. It's crazy. Like you see the look in their eyes and they're, they're, they're like tears in their eyes. Can I ask a question since you watched it though? Yeah. If these people who are worshiping him, they must have taken the course before, right? Because you wouldn't, you wouldn't be that excited if you were just like, well, I, no. I'm, I'm at my wit's end here. I don't know what to do. Let me try this. I've heard about this guy. No, you, there's you a would, lot of those people in there. It's so f- why are you cheering that hard if you don't know if you – you're not – He's whipping them into a frenzy. You're, not, you're so unsure if this is going to work. You don't know. If- it didn't look like anybody was unsure that it was going to work. Like they were – they had all been handed cups of Kool-Aid before they came in. You know what I mean? They had mm-hmm. to down that shit and – and. I was just struck by how – first of all, this guy is – Are you is, looking down on Kool-Aid? No. Just, I mean, we, <laughs> the we, actual we push, drink? We push a lot of our own Kool-Aid on Tom Steve Day. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, I, I'm going to walk – I'm going to attempt to walk a line here because I do feel that what he's doing – I don't want to say scam or con artist because I do really feel that these people feel – it's $5,000 to attend this event. For, Not a lot of money to change your life forever. That is, I believe. Well, then they cut to interviews in his house, and this motherfucker. I went online. He's worth like four hundred eighty million dollars, which I I support. Like I'm like, go for it. We're not pushing our Kool Aid hard enough. <laughs> no, his house is like uh, like on the beach in Florida. Like it's fucking unbelievable. It's like a mansion, and he's an ultra positive guy. He is charismatic as fuck, which I didn't think I would ever see in him. But when you see him lock eyes with people. And and tell them that they're wor- a worthy person. They're a good person. They can overcome anything. Like if you don't want to change your life, to fuck out of here. He curses a lot. Oh, too. he gets Did you he, know he, that? he gets hostile. Holy shit! Every other word. I just out paid five k, Tony. Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> he fucking, every other word out of this guy's mouth is a sometimes. Curse. Pe- sometimes Tony, you need a, a pat on the ass, mm, not a yeah. kick in the not a he kick gives in the butt. It. He breaks it down, <laughs> and then he builds you up. And he uh, lock it, clock it out. And he, uh, he, he says he curses on purpose because, like, he says it breaks people's defensive defenses. They don't expect you to, to be there cursing. So this guy's telling – like, this one guy's telling him he tried to kill himself. Another guy was raised in a religious cult in Cuba. Uh, I'm sorry, Brazil, one of these fucking down south countries. And uh, she, was, she was fucked since the age of six because that was this cult thing. Like, and she's crying and he's crying and the whole crowd is clapping and they're all hugging each other and bringing it in. And I see it. I see what he's saying. Like, like I see why these people are into it. But then you, if you break down his actual advice, I feel any one of us can do it. It's common sense. We should do it. Yeah, I agree. We should start uh, uh, the Tell Him Steve Dave. Um, life coach? Yeah, the life, like, you know, and hold seminars. We did start it with the uh, Walt Flanagan life coach. Remember when we used to give advice? Yeah, yeah, we, right. did, yeah we didn't no. make any money off yeah, of that. So. <laughs> and we would only have to be on stage uh, for f- three hours at a pop since there's four, since there's three of us. Or no, four hours at a pop. So we each go? Yeah. Right. Like, like I go first. I'm like, you should probably all hang yourselves. I mean, <laughs> but look at look at what I what I do, and I still hate my life. So there's probably no hope for any of you. So then you weed out all the fucking losers, right? Who are, or, or no? Or, but the losers are where you're going to make all your money. Yeah, you get, oh, really? You need the, the losers. returning the returning losers. That's okay. what, that's what I, that's all I learned from this documentary is you need the losers to make money. 
like at that game because they're because they're so desperate that they're like anything, to anything to help, anything. And and I'm saying his package is very shiny and bright. I get it. He like the woman who got raped, right? She was like crying in front of him, and like and his advice were, you tell me if he says anything out of, out of like the ordinary. He's like, you're a strong person. You got through it, and you're worthy of love. And who? Who's going to love this girl? Who's going to love this girl? And the whole crowd gets up and starts clapping. All these potential rapists. And he, he, he goes – he go, looks at her and goes, I want you to pick three men, three men in this crowd right now who can love you without wanting anything from you. And then she looks around and she's like, him, him. And the guys come over and they hug her. And they're like, you're her, you're her uncle now. Like I want you to call her <laughs> once a month. I want Legally? You- <laughs> I don't know if he has that power in the state of Florida. He's like, I want you to call – he basically handed the work off to people. <laughs> He, this Your one, her uncle now be like, oh shit, I shouldn't have raised my hand. <laughs> this one fucking guy, this one guy and this girl, she stands up and she's complaining about a boyfriend, right? He's basically like a pussy. Like, like, um, he's sitting right next to her. <laughs> so fucking Tony Robbins gets him up and he's like, and he basically, this is actually, you would love it. It's pretty funny. He dresses the guy down. He's like, you're a sheep, man. He's like, you're a sheep. <laughs> And of course I am, Tony. I just paid five grand to sit here <laughs> yeah. and listen to you. You think I don't know an asshole? In front, of a, in front of a crowd of what? Of yes. tens of thousands? That's an example. Who's going to be my uncle? <laughs> and he goes, he goes well, how many times, how, mu- how much do you guys fuck? And he, he goes, said that? He does. At the F word? Yeah, I'm telling you, he drops the F bomb. He away. didn't even say intercourse? Dude, every word. make love? He goes, and she goes, uh, and she goes about twice a month. And he looks at him disgusted, like, like, <laughs> like it's all on him. Yeah, he, like, and then he go, then he tells this, the wait, story. This was the this was what's the, the name of this documentary? The, it's called "I Am Not Your Guru," Tony Robbins. This is the boyfriend of the the woman who had been raped. No, no, this is oh, I'm on okay. to a different story. And I'm um, sorry about that. I didn't make that clear. And then uh, so so like he gets a guy up and he tells him the story about a lion that was raised by sheep. He goes, and you're standing there going, bah, bah. He goes, but one day, he goes, a lion came along and ate the sheep. And the lion that was raised by the sheep was cowering. And the lion was like, what's wrong with you, man? And they kept force feeding him the sheep, force feeding him the sheep. And then the guy roared. He goes, let me hear you roar. And he gives the mic to the guy. And the guy goes, roar. And the whole place goes berserk. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, the guys, like, stand there all manly and shit like that. And, like, and then they do backup interviews where they're like, they're like, that's it. I'm going to go home tonight. And then the next morning, they fucked all night. Like, it's like all this weird shit, dude. Really? It's like fucking weird. But so you, you, you could be a believer, you feel, if you were, get, if you were, get, were to, be, to Look go. Look into his eyes like Svengali and shit. Could you be under Tony Robbins' spell? I think – I don't think I could, no. Because I sat there and was like, this guy's a fucking scam artist. But Plus, I got tons of puss. <laughs> yeah. But I do – did see – why people without judgment like it was so he's so magnetic that i completely understand why people do like not even a way that it could be like look at these fucking losers like following this guy like i get it i get why they're following him and if you're that lost in life like then fucking for sure like you would be like i'll give five thousand dollars to tony robbins to tell me i'm a lion and make me roar in front of a fucking crowd but it- how do you implicate that though how does that now how do you implement those that roar into something that will change your life in the real world that is what my issue with him is all the advice is surface level feel good in this room shit and then when you leave like you're you're still a sheep like i don't like, give a shit like, like get him comes in and roars in your face that, like later that day he's back dancing and directing traffic right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was crazy man it was like i, I suggest you guys watch it at, at least the first hour you can almost not watch the second hour cuz it just gets redundant but uh but man it, like and so you liken it to a cult i i liken it very much to a cult well that's yeah. that's the whole basis of a cult right is is that so you take people whose minds are malleable and malleable and and sh- sort of shape them with your philosophy and get them to i mean how else does could a cult possibly it's, uh, work it's 100 percent that brian yeah. and like at the end he's like everybody with their eyes closed and then he starts talking real low on the mic you're a beautiful person the universe is yours and people are just crying tears pouring down their face and then like he has like Helpers go through the crowd and grab people's head and start shaking their head and like that's it, that's it. And you're just and I'm just like, that's when I'm like, these people are fucking morons. Like this is crazy. <laughs> you should have invested that five thousand dollars in something. But if he helps people, 
And he doesn't even have to help them. They just have to believe that he's helped them. Right. Right? So, In any small way, if they believe it, then it's true. That's the reality. That was a question I wanted to pose to you. So does that mean that he's not a con artist? Like he is actually doing what he's claiming to do? Like does his target negate what he's doing? Like the fact that he only seems to be going for these weird lost people – well, they're the only ones coming to him. They're coming to him. Yeah. They're coming to him and also um, if they walk away feeling that their life has changed and they continue to feel that way, then he's even if it doesn't really change. Because he's not saying like, hey, you're going to be a fucking millionaire. You're going to – you're going to own a fucking Maserati. You're going to live in a mansion. Or is he saying – he's is he, he saying nothing is out of your reach? He's saying he's going to give you the – yes. He's saying he's going to give you the tools to uh-huh. break yourself down and build yourself up as an unstoppable force. And like that girl that got raped back to her, he was like, all right, now I want you to go and do what I do for other people, inspire people, but do it better than me. He's like, go out there. He's like, and, and, and help people like you, like I've helped you. And like suddenly like this, after the credits, they have like a thing. Now she's writing a book mm-hmm. and like she's starting her own self-help seminars and shit like that. So she's like, fuck, I can get rich. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know what With to make really of it. really no training though. Well, he doesn't have any training. That's, that's what I'm, I'm reading really? right here. He doesn't have uh, any I think he's like a high school dropout. Yeah. Do you want to know about him, Walt? Yeah, I would like to know about him. Um, he began his career promoting seminars for Jim Rohn. Later, without any educational background in psychology, he began his own work as a self-help coach. He had neurolinguistic programming and Ericksonian hypo- hypnosis after training with some guy. In 83, he learned to firewalk and began to incorporate that into his seminars. They didn't show anything. His use of board breaking, skydiving, and later firewalking in his seminars is intended to help participants push through their walk. fears. I mean, I've seen people do it, so I believe it's possible. But do you know how it's done, though? Yeah, it has something to do with the top layer being cool, right? Yeah, and it's the coals underneath that are hot or something. Right. Um, so, you know, it's bullshit. You can mind or matter. You cannot. No, you can get burned. Oh, well, yeah, of course you can. Yeah. But you could, can you? The question is, is not if you can get burned. The question is, can you convince, can your mind keep your feet from fucking burning as you step on hot coals? No. Okay, can that's good. Can you defy physics? <laughs> if yeah. you watch this, I was getting a little worried. <laughs> Do you want to hear about some controversies? Yeah, definitely. Uh, he responded to an FTC charge of misrepresentation of potential earnings to franchise investors. So I guess you could um, be a Tony Robbins franchisee. Um, also, uh, financial seminar guru Wade Cook. He's pretty well known. Also sued Robbins for copyright infringement and plagiarism, saying that he used proprietary terms in his seminars. Uh, So he had to pay damages for that. In 2001, he filed suit against the Vancouver Sun, alleging defamation and libel. That one he won. Ooh, somebody fucking called him an adulterous, wife-stealing hypocrite. Whoa. Yeah. Well, the Vancouver Sun called him that, and he was awarded 20000 in damages. No. His wife's very attractive, but I, mean, I guess that's not a surprise when you have $480 million in the oh, bank. Yeah. Here you go, Walt. You want to hear some mind over matter? <laughs> You're buying steak with that money. You ain't getting ground, Chuck. This was a little bit over a month ago. Uh, dozens were burned and required medical attention after attempting to walk on coals <laughs> during a firewalking event at a Tony Robbins motivational seminar in Dallas. Uh, according to the website, the firewalk is intended to help people conquer their fear by walking across hot coals. Uh, it's a symbolic experience that proves if you can make it through the fire, you can make it through anything. Well, I guess those guys can't make it through anything. Dozens. That's, Dozens. That's alarming. And that's where you have to uh, question the um, the whole thing. It, it's <laughs> No fire walking in the Tell Em Steve Dave seminar. Absolutely not. Tell Em Steve Dave seminar, for at least my, when, my, when I, get my, I go up there on stage. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, it's. I'd a, love to see you do three hours on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay five thousand dollars to see that by himself. <laughs> I would love it. It would be fucking amazing. <laughs> Go ahead, tell it. Walk us I through this. I would be like. I would be like. First off, it's not about you. Everything's always about You're you. <laughs> That's the first thing. It's about the other people in your life. It isn't about you. If you just stop and, and consider what other people need from you or want from you and it, take care of that 
and everything else just falls into place. Well, with a caveat, not just anyone. <laughs> our, fucking mission, our message is going to be so convoluted. <laughs> <laughs> three hours of that followed by three I mean, hours I, I, of this. You, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'll be the plant in the audience. <laughs> Excuse me. Wrong with being Brian a Johnson from the Newsly News. <laughs> 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 Question, Mr. Flanagan. <laughs> the newsly news. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with just being a, like a, a cog or a plumber or something something along the lines. They want to better their lives and not fucking maintain the status quo. <laughs> is, it, is it always just about money? No. This girl was just about like loving herself after getting raped. A billion right. times. So how are you going to do that? There was a girl who – You can't who, call people cogs and expect made, them to walk away being like, well, that was we, money we, well there's spent. There's nothing wrong with it though. <laughs> he made this girl call up her boyfriend and break up with her on a speakerphone in front of the whole oh, audience. Yeah? yeah. No, you're right. And and let's face Stop it. Most of us – Stop feeling bad about yourself because you, because you go to work every day and provide. You should be, you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, you, I'm right? not arguing it. Right. Yeah, I mean Stop we're, we're all cogs in one be, way or another. you don't um, have uh, – because you don't have a mansion, or you don't have, a, um, or maybe your childhood was was not as as good as somebody else's, or so you think. Because I'm sure everybody you talk to um, will have something that they can point to that um, makes them feel sad about their childhood. And stop, yeah. um, just get on with it. Stop holding on to it. Everything. Yeah. Let or, it or, fucking or, go. Or turn it I would into give a them podcast. a balloon. <laughs> yeah. I would have to make them pay like a thousand dollars for that balloon. <laughs> and I'd be saying, like, hold on to that balloon. Now let that balloon go. We'd be outside, right? And <laughs> and when that balloon go, when that balloon floats off, I'd be like, "That's all your worries. And that's all your problems." <laughs> See, that is basically what he does. Like really? he, he makes like a symbolic. Like that's basically it. Like to. See, as to me, because that doesn't sound like a real world solution. <laughs> but, it's, but if he did that in the documentary, I would, I, I wouldn't have blinked. Like it's right in line with what he does. It's right in line. And once that balloon floats away, you got to promise yourself you're not going to beat yourself up over bad decisions or decisions that were out of your hands, um, and just, just be be a, a person that you're that you are proud of. You. You sound just like him. I'm not fucking kidding. This one girl was talking about like how her father didn't love her and all this shit and he was addicted to drugs. And he's like, well, blame the motherfucker. Blame him. He goes, but also blame him for the person you are. Blame him for how strong you are today. Blame your father. If you're going to blame him for all the bad stuff, blame him for the good and let it go. Like shit like that. He's saying exactly what you're fucking saying. He's being like, forget about it. <laughs> it's fucking That'll be your three hours. Yeah. I'm like, what do you got? Problems? Forget about it. <laughs> you want to hear fuck? problems? I got taxes up the ass. <laughs> you know all the 5000 that you're paying me? I'm losing 2500 right off the top. Uncle yeah. Sam's getting that money. Yeah, and then when I take my manager, my agent, uh-huh. travel, yeah. all this other bullshit into account. <laughs> I'm down to thousand dollars <laughs> find out who for six days the find fuck? out who the most like three important people are in your life and then ask yourself yeah. are they proud of me are they proud of the decisions i make on a daily basis well if, i can talk to s2 you right now <laughs> <laughs> if you think that if you and if you if you have any concerns that they may not be proud of the, of how you are leading your life or the things that you're doing that's what you address. That's a sign. That's, That's your a checklist sign. of that, what yeah, to address. There's a, there's a sign right there that you're okay. Well, then let me change what I'm doing. And as soon as you become a source of pride for the three most people in your life, what else is there? So meet others' expectations <laughs> of you. The most not not. Any people you, res- people you respect. I said three important people in your life. So people you respect, people you'd like. I'd want them to be proud of me. You can re- yes. You uh, the three most important people in your life. They should you should respect them. I would think right. Um, and you should and you should be in love or love them unconditionally. Right. But you also want to you also want them to be proud of you at the end of the day. When it's all said and done. Well, one of my three, end. one of my three, as long as I keep her in lemonade and ravioli, like she's, <laughs> she's proud of me. Well, that, we'll see, right? Well, you know what? Yeah, and there's there's an instance though where you're going to find a, you're going to find your it's such a funny choice. Your um, <laughs> lemonade and ravioli. She loves it. Yeah. I don't want to use the word recognition, but I want, but you're going to get your respect and your. Um, you're going to get it from other people though because of the way that you have. Um, Taken on, you know, 
that person you're you're showering in ravioli. You're going to. Um, <laughs> you're going. You know, people have see it. People people recognize it, and people will like, and people acknowledge it. Look at that motherfucker <laughs> showering that, that girl around. Like showering her in ravioli. <laughs> Honestly, she'd take a shower it. in ravioli if I gave her the opportunity. People know it, and people uh-huh. and people are well aware of it, and it's one of your most. Um, it's one of the re- it's it's one of the big reasons that you do will get respect and it prevents me from being a total and, monster and, and people will are, are in, and the people should be proud and one of the things they should point to to be proud of um, knowing you because of uh, how you have uh, taken on that responsibility to raise a child all right so I got that you got a lot you got a lot I always said that you 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 hold on to stuff and you're on you've held on to that balloon like it was fucking surgically fucking <laughs> stitched into your skin. <laughs> yeah. Some of it helps, I think. Some not so much. I mean, the, the fact that my, that I grew up hating myself so much and being so... You hid that, though. What's that? You hid that from everybody. Yeah. It, I trick people. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, people have told me that they're like, I, I would have thought you were the most confident person ever. And they're like, until they get to know me, and then they're like, oh my God, you're a mess. <laughs> Even people who got to know you, I don't think, you didn't let that out. You didn't let that, um, you didn't let that side of your show until, you know, until well many well, years it was later. Yeah. Because it was, a, it was a combination, I've had a lot of years to think about this with Brian. He has a combination of self loathing, also coupled with, almost supreme arrogance about other people. <laughs> so it's like a weird, it's like, you can't say he's wrong. Like most people are fucking idiots and assholes and he recognizes that. So it's like he doesn't feel less them than less than these people. In fact, Brian feels better than these people, but he also doesn't like himself. So it's a fucking odd dichotomy. Well, if I'm not this awful, can you imagine what I think of you? But is that a narcissistic trait though? Mm, I don't know. Because most people he, and he thinks he's smarter than everybody else and it But he is he's... smarter. I do think he's smarter than most people. But you, but you could point to, and I don't mean this in a bad way. But you could point to decisions that he's made in his life that would make you think, like, well, how can he still hold those beliefs? Oh, though? sure, almost every decision he's made. <laughs> yeah, I but- agree. <laughs> 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 right? I mean, like, at a certain point, you got to go like, wait a second, wait a second. That guy's an idiot. But he's not. No, no, no. That guy, he's looking at somebody oh, else. That other man. person out there, he's looking at. That guy's an idiot. But, you know, it looks like, but, like you know, he's not, in the, he's not in the same boat I am right now. He, like, I'm in a boat that's, like, taking on water. He's not in a boat that's taking on water. That sounds like a Tony Robbins kind of analogy, right? Yeah, yeah. Dude, you got it, Dad. I can't wait till we do this. I can't wait. <laughs> you might do all 12 hours. Brian's <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> boat is taking on water like crazy, right? Would you agree with that? I'm on, yeah. I'm on phone with and the that, Gramercy. <laughs> <laughs> and that boat has been taking on water for decades. And sometimes it looks like it's going down. But yet he finds out, he finds a fucking uh, – uh, what's a, an empty coffee pot, and he's able to just take enough water out of that boat to keep it afloat, just when it looks like it's going to go down forever. As Q, Q said recently, you're like you you have had more second chances than anyone I've ever met. <laughs> like every time it looks like you're about to go down, boom, something happens and you're back. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's. Um, I, I think it's just there, there's something inside me that that sell, like sabotages. Yeah. Like yeah, I don't. I, sometimes I don't even mean it. I don't think it's just like a um, like a subconscious. Like, like I know I shouldn't do certain things, but I do them anyway. Right. And I don't know why. Well, I think everybody does that to a degree, but you you yeah. really. But it's not, I mean, look, you're also you know. Oh, you should like it's successful, it, right? I, I mean, mean, you're not you're not a failure, right? I mean, you should be so happy. <laughs> To even if you if you take everything away, you are you are raising a great kid. You are her everything. That, that's enough for a lot of people. That that's enough to to float people's boat and just be like and feel good about themselves. That that's enough. It, 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 all the other stuff's just gravy. Yeah, you know what um, Edgar said to me. This isn't to put him down or anything. This is just him. But I told Walt this. I, w- I went to uh, Pam and Edgar's for dinner a few weeks ago, and he was talking about how he was on the job with my brother Darren. Mm-hmm. Um, not like police officers on the job, but uh, they do construction. And I guess he had a shirt or something. Tell him Steve Dave's shirt, and somebody was like, "Oh, I love that." 
that podcast. Oh, How'd really? You get that? Yeah, and he was like, "Oh, that's my son." <laughs> he admitted that he was and Edgar. They, yeah, <laughs> and they uh, they didn't believe him, and but then they somehow they figured out Darren was my brother too. And as Edgar's telling the story, and he's he's playing it cool, he's just like, "Oh, you know, I see him all the time. It's no big deal." It's like. You know, I, I work for I work for Tommy Hilfiger, so it's not like he's the most famous person I know. And I'm just like, <laughs> he's telling me this. <laughs> like, you could have left that part out. Yeah. And honestly, like, is Tommy Hilfiger like is that name better known than mine? Absolutely. Would would most people know Tommy Hilfiger if they fucking stumbled across him? I don't think so, right? No, but also like that's not the measure of what your father should be judging you by. <laughs> it's how famous you are. The recognition factor. Yeah, that's a poor yardstick. Do you yeah. do you crave achievements that are that have to be like big to take to take any kind of satisfaction, or can you or can you enjoy little achievements? Well, what's little? Say like I don't know. Um, I'm trying to figure out your scale. Um. Bit, well, what's big? I don't think I've achieved anything big. Well, all right. What about – I mean you can say that you – I mean I would say that you're leading a successful podcast. Is it, is it an achievement that you can take uh, some yeah, pride in? Six seasons of a television oh, show. Yeah. The, the podcast is is big for me. It's my favorite thing, mm-hmm. obviously. The TV show is cool but it's not my favorite thing. Yeah, I, And I know. And I know a lot of people would be like, wow, you've been on TV for six years and – right. But you talk into a mic and like, like what that is the, what is an achievement that would make you happy though at this point? Would it just, is it is would it come down to like some sort of big paycheck? Would it come down to some sort of uh, artistic endeavor? No, I don't know. I don't think about being happy that much because I think it's out of reach. So, <laughs> so I really don't think about like well, what would what would like make me like a happy person. I yeah, I think know. you got to change that thinking. Yeah, yeah. You got to go to a Tony Robbins seminar. No, but I've been telling you We're for a few diamond. years now. You got to find <laughs> yeah, that you should go back to therapy. I just think that this is what I think your problem is. I think you're you're smart enough to know what the answers are already. Oh yeah, and right. You, so and you don't want to do it. So you don't want to go to therapy to have somebody tell you what those answers are, and then have you not do it. I'm like, why am I paying you? I already know this shit. <laughs> That's what I think. The yeah. smartest guy. I mean, I, I've, I've said Giddens the smartest guy in the room, but that was in jest. Right. The smartest guy in the room anytime is is Brian Johnson. I agree with that. But he, it, what's which is confounding is he knows what the answers are, but he's but for some reason, like you said, he's on he's on he doesn't want to to know to I guess take the necessary. Actions, or I don't know. It's, yeah, is it is it fear? Is it like, well, what if I what if I change things and things get better, and then I don't know how to handle it? That is what I think you should go to therapy for. That question is, I think, the big <laughs> question that there's just fucking no way to know. Because also in recent years, like you've stopped opening up about certain things to me. Definitely, I don't know about to you. But like we used to talk fucking. F- four days in a row for two hours a thing about our shitty fucking problems. And we don't really do them anymore. And I think that you hit a point where you're like, I just don't want to talk about this anymore because I've talked about it so much. We've talked it to death and I don't want to, I don't want to put my friends in this situation where we're talking about it anymore. So, so I don't even know, like for me personally, I don't, I don't even know where your headspace is at with it. You know? Yeah. Do you still have problems that you could talk about for two hours? Because you seem legitimately more happy now than you have been in p- recent years. I have. I am. Oh, we pivoted to me. Um, I am the best for me. I'm not talking about the outside world. I'm just talking about. I am the. What you mean like fucking? The, no, just the current ha- state of the world. Just how I feel about myself. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what I mean? I don't. I can't. I don't know how other people feel about me. But I. I feel I'm the best version of myself I've ever been. I'm legitimately happy. I am. I am content. I am. I, I'm in a whole new universe. I, I'm in a place that I actually never thought I, w- I would be, and I think it has something to do with age. Like I think oh, yeah. I just got to a certain age where I was like, I think a lot of it has to do with just getting to a certain age and being like, all right, so this is what it is. Like this is. Right. I mean, you only got so 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 many years to right. to uh, figure it out. You better figure it out because if you don't, you're going to sit there and go like, well, fucking I wasted the best years. Or be content that I can't figure it out. Looking for something that was always there. I just fucking didn't see it. Yeah. 
I think that's it. And then I getting sick. I mean, I know I, I beat this drum a lot on this show, but it, it changed my life in in ways that I can't even fucking fully express. Like I like when you think you're gonna die for two months straight. Like there's just anytime me. something bothers me, I'm just like. <clears throat> Like my fucking brain's not exploding, so I'm fine, <laughs> you know. I don't normally do that. I, I remember telling my shrink once she was talking about whatever fucking bullshit issue I had at the time, and she started talking about you know relative to that somebody else who had a worse problem, and I was like, look, just because somebody else oh, has yeah. it worse doesn't mean that I don't have it bad. I'm uh, you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to hear that shit. And to put a fine point on it, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Yeah, fuck them or, her, or whoever. But like uh, two weeks ago, we were sitting here. We were waiting to shoot and this family came in from South Carolina and it was a mom, a dad, a kid who was like, I don't know, maybe five and then a little girl who was two and she had on these weird glasses. And um, she said that uh, – I mean she, she was so happy, the lady, to see me and I think Ming was here. Uh, we watch you guys all the time. We love you. And I was like, oh, you, what, did you come up for vacation? She's like, oh, no. We um, we went up to Philadelphia because um, the girl, I can't remember her name, but she's like, you know, she uh, she has eye cancer and that's the best uh, hospital for the whatever surgery she was going to get. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at her. She's holding this little two-year-old that has eye cancer. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. two things. One. Fucking no way does God exist. No, like, fuck off. Right. I, I mean, come on, man. How could you give a little kid eye cancer? And two, like whatever was bugging me at that moment, oh, I know what it was. My my car wouldn't start and I was annoyed and had to ride my motorcycle in because it was like I thought it might rain. Your free motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I felt like such a dick in the moment because I'm like, these are people who are dealing with like – uh, I just can't even imagine it. I can't imagine somebody being like, OK, well, here's the problem. She has eye cancer and let's go from there. Like that's a – that's that's insane. You just – To hear that helpless, as a Helpless, no control, nothing. Nothing you can do except hope that when you go to the best hospital in the country, which was, I guess was in Philadelphia – that they're going to be able to knock it out, you know, and she'll be able to see or whatever. But to see these little, like a little kid with such a disadvantage, or that girl that died on her own terms recently, she had some kind of rare disease. Did you see her? And they, yeah. she's like, I don't want to do all the chemo. She was like five or six. She didn't want to do all the chemo and stuff. So they brought her home, and she fucking hung out and read some of her favorite books or whatever, and she died. She's like five or six. I might have forced her into the chemo. <laughs> that, that kind of uh, – I mean it was just a matter of time. Oh, it was just And nothing. she was like – yeah, she's like, I don't want to spend my last couple months, you know, feeling yeah, sick and thrown up and all that I mean I don't shit. even have kids, man, and I, I, it just sounds like you, you just never recover. But I mean the, the fucking courage of a little kid – to to be able to get their head around that and be mm. like – but I mean also it's good because I'm sure they plied her with like you're going to go to God. There's going to be angels. You see grandma or whoever the fuck died already, you know, maybe your pets. Well, but aren't you doing – well, you're doing what a lot, what a lot of people it, – it's they fall into that, that analogy uh, therapy of like, well, look at that person and – yeah, you know, and you're doing. I mean, you're and you're doing it right now, right? That, I mean, in some situations, I say bullshit. In this situation, where I'm like, mm, my car wouldn't start, and she's like, I sure hope I can see. <laughs> it's like you do. You feel like a dickhead because it's so minor that that problem. I mean, honestly, if I didn't have the bike, I could have called someone from production and been like, "Come get me." Right. You know, it's not really a problem. Yep, it's an inconvenience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fucking a, but so little kids eye cancer aside. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so that's what Tony Robbins is up to. That's what he's up to. Yeah, man. I don't know what to make of it, man, because I'm just like charismatic my bullshit though, right? fucking intent. Oh, dude, there was the one thing I can't take away from him. He is charismatic. Mm-hmm. The other thing is he is helping people at least in that moment. So, so then maybe I got to give it to him. Yeah. But I would never do it. And if I did do it, I couldn't look you guys in the face and be like, I'm going – I just spent five grand to go see Tony Rao plus you flight be, plus hotel. You would feel um, <laughs> embarrassed to uh, reveal that? Why? I think so because I, I think I, I'm – and you guys definitely because you're all older than me. But like I think that I, I come from that generation. You know, I was blue collar. 
my father worked for the city. I worked for the city up until my mid thirties. And like, there's just that thing of like, plus I'm a fan of old school fucking masculinity. You know what I mean? Like I like the shit that people are fucking getting their panties in a bunch of these days. Like I like pulling (laughs) yourself up by your bootstraps. I like being a fucking like man, handling your problems, getting your fucking head straight, being in business. Like, like I like all that shit. So to me, I think there's something, and I'm not saying that's the only path to walk, that's just mine. But, you're, but you could be – you're coming into a world where that's uh, like you're just been chipped out of a, a fucking glacier though. <laughs> you know, that's, you're this Encino, world man. Yeah, this world doesn't <laughs> want that. Cute. Know, they don't want it. They, you're a caveman walking around. I am. In your furry pants. That's fine though because I'm also 40, which means basically the world's left me behind. Like the world belongs to the young. Like I'm never going to have an effect on – Politics. I'm never, except for vote for Hillary. You uh, I'm never have, going you could to. At this stage, it is your stature at this point in the world. You yeah. could have a factor. I can't because you know what my politics are. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to hear my shit. Nobody wants to hear that. Like, like, you know what? Men should open doors for chicks. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody wants to hear the shit that I believe anymore. That men should fucking button up and like be a little fucking tighten up your fucking pants. Like, be a little manly. Stop bitching and crying and whining and all this shit. Um, that shit doesn't fly anymore. So I don't. Like the best I can do is keep my mouth shut and let the kids fucking run this new pussy ass fucking world into the ground. <laughs> Which I'm sure what every generation has said. Yeah, every yeah, every older generation right. has said that about the one, the generation coming exactly. up. And uh, the world's still spinning. Spin, yeah, still spinning. Yeah, yeah but this, this is a this is a fucking all time low for fucking pussy ass behavior. Though. I don't know. Like, think about war in Vietnam, like all the hippies protesting it. You don't think people were like these fucking these goddamn faggots? They don't want to go to war. They don't want to be. Re-. You know what I mean? I'm- no, no, yeah, that I agree with. I mean, but I, I don't. I don't see problems with people protesting things. But when when the problems are like, oh, you, you said a word I don't like. I need uh-huh. a safe space. Oh, I got triggered. Oh, yeah. fucking everyone. And that's that's where the fucking me, me, me shit comes in. It's like, well, this offends me. Therefore, don't joke about it. Well, this, you know, oh, you're going to talk about, you know, yeah. some, some topic. Well, I can't be in this class. I can't watch this movie. Why wasn't there a trigger warning that somebody's going to get shot in this movie? Yeah. It's just like, give me a fucking break with this shit. I mean – like you say, I'm sure like the greatest generation now would look at us, uh, you know, at our generation growing up and being like, ah, oh, they're soft. And maybe that's how you know you're getting old because you look at the next generation and you're like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Like this is who we're putting it in the hands of, a bunch of fucking pansies. But I feel <laughs> to me, this I think is part of what I was talking about before, why I'm happy now. I am like, take it. I'm like, take it. Take take it, you fucking millennials. And do what you want with the world, because I am I'm done. Like my like I'm done. Like I'm on I'm on that hill, and now I'm on like I'm just looking at the other side, and I'm like now all I gotta do is coast to the grave. Was this some sort of struggle before you let that go? Because were you still struggling to be like I want to I want to be a factor in in the world? No, because I think the fire department for me. I think before I got into the fire department, I was a bit of a whiny cunt. And Brian could fucking really? attest to that. Is that true? <laughs> Maybe yeah. he wouldn't word it that way. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't word, word it that way, but I did get carjacked because of him. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I, I think that I needed I needed something in my life that um, I think men need to be tested. Probably women too, but I can't speak to that. And I never had that until I went into the fire department. And that was the start of me. And I also, again, growing older, like get it, turning 30 was a big deal. And I think that like – Back in the day when well, – like way back in the day, like fathers would take their kids hunting. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking about like fucking pilgrim era. You know what I mean? Like – and they would go to war and they would do these things that like tested them and hardened them. And I don't see – only because of my own experiences, Walt, I didn't have that until I went into the fire department. Um, and I don't see – But a lot of, I mean but a lot of guys come back from the things that you say harden them. They come back – yeah, uh, changed forever in a way, not that, in a you know, way. And, and not and not and and legitimately, legitimately, um, broken be from you know the experience. Sure. What I forgot what it's called PSD, post traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, um, if I, I mean, well, that's why I'm always te- speaking of my own experiences. Yeah, our tests, you know? but there are no tests now. No, there have to be. You just don't. You just don't recognize them. 
Well, that's why I have the world of fucking respect for anybody in the military because they are the people going through it. But but this generation, like I don't see anything but softness. Like the, the complaining about the safe spaces, the complaining about the 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 – the, off- the constant offense, the outrage culture that we live in—it's just like. Well, they—they they, it seems like they want to be like they—they want it like that. That's why when you see a news story, like if it's if it hits all those right points that get people pissed, it's in the forefront. Yeah, but there's tons of shit that happens right. that doesn't hit those but same you, marks but, that you, you know can't wouldn't give get people props outraged. For the passion, though, uh, to actually. No. Be angry about something and, and either a either bring it to light, because I mean, for my whole entire existence, I've been passionless. I, I've, I haven't given a fuck about anything. I haven't <laughs> right. given a fuck about anything outside of uh, my own little circle. My own my own little world is all that mattered, and in problems in the real world, we're like, don't it doesn't affect me. I don't care. It, I don't care enough to be angry about. Um, some of the things that anger um, a generation didn't matter to me because it wasn't affecting me. I right. didn't care enough to be, get hostile about it or to, be, or to be moved enough to be like, what are we going to do about this? This is outrageous. This is wrong. Let's do something. <laughs> no, There's pops like, missing. <laughs> I, was just like, I, was, I was just like, well, is my world all right? All right. That's all that matters well, to me. That's what, that's what this gener- – and that's why I don't disagree – with a lot of what what these people are saying. In fact, I agree with most of it. It's the it's like the ex, the expression of it. Because they would say like, "Well, you know why, buddy? You didn't have to fucking do. You you could only get away with your world because you weren't black and you weren't getting fucking harassed by cops just because your skin was black. Because you 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 know you weren't raised in a fucking ghetto. Yeah. So and they're right. They're oh, not yeah, fucking they're, wrong at all. Oh, no no no. Good. We were raised in a ghetto. We just weren't black. <laughs> yeah, but it's like they, they would say like you. You had the comfort to be able to live that existence. Yeah. And they want that for everybody, which, hey, man, I agree with that. Well, yeah, why shouldn't everybody have right. that? Um, but meanwhile – But I'm talking – I thought you were talking about – those are – I'm not saying that – I thought you were talking about what you perceive to be trivial um, things that are causing – Well, I think that – That's you, not a trivial I think if you concern, follow, no. I, no, no, it's not. But I think if you follow that line with some – like you get people who are – just need to be like the the outrage like the the when you got a fucking major movie studio I still haven't seen Ghostbusters I know you love it when you have a major movie studio telling people like well if you don't like Ghostbusters you're a misogynist and a sexist like that's taken too far to in my opinion just in my opinion and that is what our I feel our society is now just like I'm offended by this I'm offended by that and for me personally this is just me and again I'm a middle aged fucking white dude like. You water down the message. You get it to the point where I'm just like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about anything because you can't even fucking – you can't say anything without somebody getting offended. So why would I say anything? Well, then – well, then you know, that would beg the question. Why are you sitting in front of a mic then yeah. taking a chance? Because see, I'm not saying anything controversial. See, here's, here's the key. You say whatever you want and you fully embrace not giving a fuck at all what someone's opinion of it is. If you can do that, that's great. Yeah, it's tough to do though. If you, um, especially when you get the emails that you know that I see, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, I, 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 I don't like to get angry emails or emails that are say that they're ashamed to listen to Tom, Steve, Dave. I don't like to hear that stuff. So my you know. buddy said on Twitter the other day that he he was trying to decide which Lethal Weapon movie he wanted to watch, and people went fucking berserk on him. You're gonna watch a movie from that fucking. From 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 that asshole Mel Gibson, he's he's a racist. He's a, he's an anti semite. He fucking did this to his girl. Like that's what it is. Like and you're just like no asshole. I'm gonna watch Lethal Weapon, which is a fucking awesome movie. Like I don't know how to tell you this. Like it's, I, I think the comment should be like, why the fuck do you feel the need to post this? Just fucking pick one and shut the fuck sure. up. Sure, <laughs> that I can agree with. <laughs> that I can agree with. Well, there, but there's also like uh, like something I could never really. I don't know how legitimate it is or how much it's played up. Um, I don't really know how much it angers you, Brian, these things, these these news. Were, I don't know if it's a legitimate anger or are you amping it up. But, like, I can't identify with somebody who gets angry about reading or seeing a story about someone being triggered. Like, to me, I read it and it's, and it's in my eye socket and it's out the back of my head immediately because it's 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 almost like – 
I, I can't imagine. I can't. It, it can't like make my my uh, my needle move. Right. And it makes your needle move. I don't know if it's a legitimate moving the needle or or because I don't. Yeah, I can't identify with that. I can't identify with being angry uh, about seeing a news story about. Uh, Something that you find to be uh, like ridiculous, like um, someone was triggered be- or like triggered about seeing something in a movie. Uh, sometimes, I mean, lately, as of late, it doesn't. I don't even really read the news that much, so I don't get upset about things. But yeah, so, so it's weird. Like I'll read something and I'll be like, "Look at this fucking puss!" Like I want, the, I want them right there so I can fucking dress them down and debate them and let them know why they're being such a fucking bitch or why they're being so fucking childish about something so small. And and, and I, I just I don't. I wish I could. Yeah, I wish the, I could. I wish I could get in your brain and like and kind of like do some laser surgery to yeah. cut that part of your out of your brain and. Oh, you want to give lobotomy. me a little lobotomy? A little, a little lobotomy. <laughs> not a full lobotomy. Yeah. Just... I'm not really trained in it, but also I wasn't trained to be an uh, inspirational speaker. But I think I could. I'm, I do. I'm telling you. I want you give me a lobotomy. Let's do a little brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs> we we should send Brian to Tony Robbins. Oh, I think I think he's he's one of those cases though, that would be impossible to reach though. Yeah, what do you think, B? You think you? Yeah, you, I think Walt's right. I'm pretty. I'm fairly cynical. <laughs> yeah, I think I would sit there and the entire time I wouldn't be listening to the message. I'd be looking around at everybody being like, look at these fucking morons. Like, <laughs> why are they crying? Why are they letting people touch their heads like that? Right. Like, yeah, there's there's no way whatever he was he was saying would get through to me. And I would be like, yeah, yeah. I just, I just – yeah, I just know myself. I've, I've seen, but I see more Tony Robbins in him than a Tony Robbins follower though. I've seen him do his Sven Gulli on other people. <laughs> is, it, is it because I look like a ghoul that I'm Sven Gulli and not Sven Gali? <laughs> Sven Gulli. <laughs> I've seen him turn people for, like like you know what are your interests like the like the Jedi mind trick? Not anymore. These Sven are your Gulli. interests now. They're and, mine. and shockingly, they're my interests too. Yeah, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> It's the same thing you use on Get'em. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, Get'em uses on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like you tell Get'em, you're like, whatever they like, you like. <laughs> well, I, but, we, I, but we both acknowledge, though, that he's, that he's lying, though. Right. I'm, yeah. not trying to, I'm not trying to brainwash him, though. <laughs> so you think that's what I do? I get a hold I of somebody. I've seen some brainwashing. Yeah, I agree. Some light brainwashing. <laughs> yeah, you've seen some. <laughs> you've seen a little bit in your day, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would like to – and I, my mother tried to beat it out of me when I was little. She hated that I was skeptical about shit. She hated – she was like, why do you always have to ask why? She would get pissed if I was – like I showed any cynicism or skepticism about shit. But I, I always questioned like, well, how, how come and why are things this way? And she didn't know the answer, so she just got angry. Yes, yeah, Sometimes too much cynicism is a bad thing. Yeah, or sometimes you get on TV. <laughs> I get to make fun of people. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, if if that was the if that was the if it ended panacea, there. <laughs> you know, to all your ills, I'd be like, yeah, just amount, just the right amount. Yeah, I, I've tried in the past. I remember one time I, I was reading about Buddhism, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to try some Buddha shit, right? So you know, uh, Tibetan Book of the Dead, and and I read up on it, and I I left home, and I'm like, all right, I'm not going to let anything get me worked up. I'm going to be all Zen and shit. Within ten minutes, I, yeah. I was trying to cut somebody off, uh, like in a like because they were fucking driving so slow. And I'm like, asshole! Like, come on! If there's one thing I hate, man, it's a motherfucker. You pull up to a light, right? And the light's green, and they don't get into the intersection to take the turn. They oh, sit yeah. there right. Uh, at the, oh my god! I want to get out and fucking just put put my hand through their windshield. Like, what what is going on in your life that you're content to sit through yet? a second revolution of a red light. What the fuck is the matter with you? Mm. Like, I just want to know the answer. <laughs> I just want to know. Yeah, but there's, there's, there is, that's a stupid person. Yeah. Just I, chalk it up to that. I'm in, behind the fucking idiot. I know, but even if I found out, even if they were like, well, you know, I have a philosophy about this <laughs> and they explained it, I would still walk away being like, I don't buy it. You're, yeah. you know, you're a jerk off. You're costing me time. 
<laughs> I don't want to sit through another red light for no reason. And then sometimes no, I'm yeah, like, yeah. well, what if like he didn't? I went, and then like everything changed, and I got fucking whaled by a car or something, you know? Because that's everything comes down to fucking. Right, because where are you going? That you need to the get chance. there so fast. Uh, just this guy's got fucking ravioli, bro. Are you, are, you, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I got ravioli duty. I mean, where do you have to go so badly that you need to be that you can't wait for a light? It, it's not that I have to get anywhere that badly. I just like, I just hate sitting in lines and traffic. Like when you think about like, all right, now I'm in line at a store, and now I'm fucking at line in, at a toll booth, and now I'm in line fucking waiting because some jerk off won't get into the fucking. Like the amount of time, like when you, what, when you what combine you, it. What are you doing with if at that time that, that would be more useful though? I don't know. I could watch TV or something. Yeah, that's that's the real. That's a real answer. Yeah. The fucking amount of television <laughs> that everybody talks about. I'm just like these people on this set do nothing but watch TV. There's it's their not business a, though. But it, there's not a chance they're doing anything but watching TV. Did you watch this? Did you watch this? Yeah. Did you watch it? I watched. Yeah. Did you watch, oh, I watched it all. Like the hours devoted to watching television. <laughs> is shocking. It would shock, I think, the normal person. I don't know how anybody could sit there and watch that much television. Did you watch BoJack, by the way? Of course. Oh, it's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> right? Wasn't it amazing? Fuck that it. on the water episode, like it was just so great, like one man. of the best episodes ever. Anyway. That's yeah. all anybody does. That's all that everybody does with their free time, it sounds like, is watch television. Yeah. But you got a lot of people who, like, like Q says, they're into TV, so. They, and what know. does that do, though? Like, what do you mean they're into TV? So well, that, the guy, that's their business. I know, but what, well, like, how does it help their craft though? When they're here, though, that they're like they, they can't honest. They just want to watch it. Which that's that's fine, but don't be like, well, I work in the industry. I gotta watch fifteen hours of TV a day. Well, if I don't say that, what do I got? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's um, yeah. You're right. I mean, people do talk about TV a lot, and when somebody's like, "Oh no, I haven't seen that," I'm like, "What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> how could you not have watched this yet?" Some good shit out there, man. Did you almost come to tears at the last episode of BoJack this season? It, like the transition from the next to last episode to the last episode just about broke my heart. The that two things that this past season, that moment in BoJack, and the very last shot of Rick and Morty when he uh, sacrificed himself was like, oh my god! Yeah. Like I got choked up, and that doesn't normally happen. Like yeah. I, I watch real death videos constantly, and it's they, meaningless. Do you remember in, the, in that episode where, where they went to a planet where everything was on a cob? Yeah, and uh, and but somebody because I, I I moderated the Rick and Morty panel at, at Comic Con this year, and somebody asked like why why was that so terrifying to to Rick that everything was on a cob, and then. Justin Roiland went on this rant about how everything's scarier on a cob. He's like, Hitler on a cob. Think about it. Like, it was just like a three minute rant about things being on a cob. Dude, it was fucking funny. I wish you were there for it. He's a crazy person. He's, he's just the best. <laughs> Hitler on a cob. <laughs> it's so fucked up. It makes sense in his world, though. Yeah. He's a great guy. I love that guy. Yeah. Well, you, you don't, you watch uh, Happy Days, right? That's pretty much. I watch reruns of Happy Days, but I don't. I wouldn't say though that I'm like transfixed on it. Though it's my background to whatever whatever I'm doing at, to, at the end of the night. Right. My, re, my rewind or re unwinding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that's what I'll pop it on. I DVR it every night. And then do something else. Yeah, I'm doing something else. Either I'm, you know, drawing or I'm uh, sorting books or I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm just or petting the dog. But I'm I'm not like I'm not. Not like in a hypnotized state, like it sounds like the way you guys fucking see every fucking thing. <laughs> like, like it's like the Zapruder, of fucking like, like you're like you're allowed, like you're the FBI watching for fucking some sort of hidden message or something in these fucking TV shows. Yeah. You're there, Walt. I, mean, I, I, I must confess that uh, that if I've taking the time to watch two shows about fucking midgets arguing. <laughs> Maybe I do watch too much TV. You, you watch an, al- a sh- an alarming amount of television. <laughs> and I never used to watch TV. I never used to like it. But there's so much great shit out there. Yeah, really Mr. Is. Robot. I hear someone's like, hey, Mr. Robot's pretty good. I'm like, oh, I'll check Sal's it out. I'm watching that now. He says it's unbelievable. Next thing you know, I'm just like 10 hours in. I'm like, oh, shit. This is, is it that good? Ma- oh, it's fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah it's they great. They should stop putting on good shows on. Because it's just yeah, it's why just, it's like opiate for the masses, bro. Get it out there. Yeah, it's either that opiate or real opiates. Real opiates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've tried both the uh, the, the TV opiates. Uh, it's cheaper and uh, not as dangerous. 
Indochino Q. Yeah. I got the mess. I got the email. Suits on the Our way. Our suits are on the way. Yeah. I can't wait. We got it. We just got to figure out the perfect opportunity to, to, to debut them together. Yeah. I wish we had them tonight. <laughs> I know. It would have been great for the Yoga Hosers premiere. Uh, go to Indochino.com. Promo code TESD for any premium suit for just three ninety nine and free shipping. I will tell you that the process was fun mm-hmm. and amazing. Uh, I will have a full review of the suit once I have it on. Nobody fiddled or diddled or junk. Unfo- that was my only complaint. Yeah, I was hoping they would. Some of those guys are pretty good looking. Um, they're reinventing men's fashion. Suit up. You're going to get a custom uh, custom measurements and all that shit. You're going to be looking fine. Just go to Indochino.com. Yeah, there's no need to buy T-E-S-D. off the rack anymore like a fucking chump. Yeah, what are you, a fucking peasant? Why are you buying off the racks? Go to Indochino, you fool. Uh, do you want to hear the, the one overkill? The, oh, yeah. That, that I've got. I forgot we didn't overkill. We got real uh, we shouldn't even, we shouldn't like philosophical on this, this one. This can't be an overkill. Don't put the overkill no. music on this. Okay, yeah. But I will I will tell you guys this because you like comics. Um, I love comics. This is about – let, <laughs> let me just get that in here before we go on. This is about the X-Men predicting 9-11. Oh, come on. 18 years prior to the destruction of the World Trade Center. Ooh, I would have probably read this issue then. Claremont and John Romita Jr., Walt, yeah. uh, published a comic that featured the act of a plane destroying the Twin Towers. Do you, what issue uh, number? Uh, Uncanny X-Men 189, Two Girls okay. Out to Have Fun, have become a collector's item for its controversial and apparently prophetic panels. Um. So it goes on to say the comic was unremembered by him, This who I wrote shit, this. We had Ramita Jr. in here. Yeah, we, we should have asked him. I've been this. like, shit, dude, you're like Nostradamus. What number is it? 289? Uh, 189. 189. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they show the panels of the planes flying over uh, the Twin Towers and getting popped. And... Uh, Do you, are you... Alex Jones, blah, blah, blah. Do you put any weight in it? I think it's uh, probably uh, a coincidence, right? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think it was prophetic. What year was it? Ooh, probably 1988, yeah, I think it says something. I think it says here uh, 85, Walt. 85. Yeah. Would you be pissed if that's where they got the idea from? Oh, no. like the terrorists read yeah. the comic and they're like, oh, shit, I don't think boy. They're allowed to read the comics. <laughs> they're not allowed to do a lot of shit, Cube. They're going, they're going to the strip you know clubs. That. They're going to strip clubs and shit, man. Well, when they're going to die, they're no, going to I'm talking about when they're over in the Middle East. I don't know. Like, I don't know if they're allowed to listen to certain type of music. I doubt comic books would be, uh, would be allowed. I heard that they could in um, – there was a – I was watching an old game show. And um, the Muppet Show was banned in Saudi Arabia because there was a talking pig. Miss Piggy was too controversial really? for Saudi Arabia. So even oh, because they don't like they don't like uh, pork. pork, right? Huh? Do they? they don't like pork? Yeah, I think they're not allowed to have pork, right? Muslims in general, I think. Yeah. Let's see. So they're, they're banned. Muslims. They ban a lot of stuff over there. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if comics were on the list too. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, I I don't know. There are several reasons as to why Muslims do not eat pork. First off, God has forbidden it in several verses of the Quran. Um, he has for only forbidden you the dead animals, blood, the flesh of swine. I think a lot of um, religions early on weren't down with pork because it, it's so easy to get sick from it. Right? That's what I heard. Like it was a health issue. Yeah. So, but why? But why ban Miss Piggy? It wasn't like you were gonna. What did they think that? Like, well, oh wow, I, I feel like having some pork chops on after watching the Muppet Show. No, <laughs> I think I mean, you're trying to assign rational thinking to a completely irrational way of life. Why was Miss Piggy banned in Saudi? Oops. Sorry, that band may be lifted though. That was a long. You time think Miss Piggy's allowed? Like they've they've loosened their fucking <laughs> very stringent. <laughs> they might, could have digitally digitally put, added a burka to Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine how different the tone uh, of that would be? God. She's fucking haya chopping fucking <laughs> You're like, who is people. it? Yeah, that was that thing. Who is just it? Just coming out of just out of the burkas, just the snout. <laughs> just the snout. 
<laughs> I'd rewatch that show if they released it like that. Um, uh, I guess it was allowed in Israel, because, uh, but not, um, but not Saudi Arabia. Why was the Muppet Show banned? OMG facts, which I found are not really true that much. The OMG facts sometimes it's like fucking get them rights them or something. Um, yeah, that's a weird thing, right? What? Uh, so, some of the shit that. No, I mean some of the shit that these countries. Well, these fucking lunatics were bur- in the United States were burning Harry Potter books. Yeah. Yeah. Remember? Did you yeah. did you see that? Yeah, did you, did you see that Recently? Um, when they were co- when they were popular and coming out? Like Catholic groups were burning issues books of Harry Potter. It was because they were witchcraft. Yeah, it was this. Fuck, man. Let's see. So uh, it's not like it's that much better over here. Oh, it's a lot better over here. Yeah, I come mean, on. I mean, they're fucking. You, in, but man. you have the fucking lunatics over here doing the same stupid shit they're doing over there. Yeah, but oh. this this um, this this Harry Potter thing <laughs> was, watching, was wasn't Muslims. It was fucking. That's what I'm uh, saying. Like, not allowing people to watch Miss Piggy is the exact same as burning a book because Harry Potter is in it. It's the exact same. Yeah, but you know, but you, it's not like it's outlawed though. It's fucking outlawed. Like if you get caught, if you're well, those people would outlaw it if they could, you know. But they can't though. So it yeah, has well, they to be burn books from here. libraries and shit like that. Oh yeah, here it is. Um, oh, yeah. it, it was called Jesus Camp. Man. Um, and there was this big fucking fat lady who um, <laughs> <laughs> who was such contempt. <laughs> but I mean, she was such a fucking idiot. This lady. Um, 2006. It's definitely worth a watch because you're like you watch these you, you watch these children being indoctrinated into such fucking nonsense and crying and being upset and and this fucking blimp of a woman. Why are they fuck, they can't read Harry Potter. No, because they think it's evil and they're they're, they're like you ain't missing much. It sucks. Yeah, no, it doesn't. What are you talking about? Oh, and I saw the fucking movie. It was fucking. Terrible. I read all the books. They were good. The books were better in the movie. I think so. Yeah. I didn't read the books. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not some ignoramus that'll fucking just say the books suck too because I didn't read them. No, books were good. But if I had to lay in bed, I bet you they suck too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this oh, woman. Um, I mean, it's, you, it's, I bet, it's the Bible. It's better than the Bible. Oh, fuck yeah, it's better than the Bible. Come on, that's the best book in the world. Yeah. It's the best, the what about the Bible? Told. Makes it a fucking great book. <laughs> Bible is the ultimate beach book. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible is the greatest story ever told. There's, that's that's the consensus. You know that, right? You're not you're going to dispute that. I I know people say that, but like, it's not really that good of even narratively. It's, it's not even that what? good of a, a story. It's not better than Cryptozoic Man. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is I, – I don't know why, but I do love shit like this as well. There's no end to um, the Bible. I'm sorry. Keep going. Uh, like Ted Haggard in the in the movie, Ted Haggard. You remember him? Preaches a sermon uh, against homosexuality. I don't remember Ted Haggard. I'm, I'm shaking my head yes, but I don't remember Ted Haggard. Yeah, it was, it was a thing. Ted Haggard was this big anti-homosexual <laughs> dude, one of these fucking uh, – What year are we talking preachers. about? Preachers. Uh, what year would this have been? The 80s? Uh, no, 2000s, 2003 to 2006. And, you know, he's going on and on about gay being wrong and gay being evil. And then it turns out he's fucking smoking crystal meth and smoking pole. Nice. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, like, like Jim well, Baker, know, Ted Haggard. Like, like I love to see them fucking brought down, these judgmental fucking assholes. But the, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, dude. But, that, but that's just man. Yeah, but the Bible – can we just go back to that for one second? <laughs> The 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 religion though, which is which man will do, right? Mm-hmm. Man will 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 shape it and use it to his advantage. I guess that's what a man, that's what a man does. But that doesn't mean that the the actual the thought or the um, the the whole the whole thinking of it is wrong. It's just that man will will ultimately always yeah. But man wrote the book, it. huh? Man wrote the Bible, but, but yeah, as it was dictated, I thought. I don't think so. Dictated by Jesus and the apostles while he was walking yeah. around. That's what I heard. I'll, I'll tell you what: the Old Testament's got some good stories in it, but the New Testament is just oh. like what about, Old what about Testament. Job. 
That's in that Old Testament. That's a good story. Man. That's what I'm saying. The Old Testament's got it's some got good some shit great in it. Stories in it. Why don't they make a movie about that? But now I think Mel Gibson's working on. It, but like narratively <laughs> yeah. speaking, the Bible is actually a pretty fucking boring book. There is no character arc. Did you read whatsoever? The whole thing? I've read, I read the Bible. Yeah, From beginning to end. There's a lot of there's a lot of line. They should do a version that doesn't have a lot of the old ways of speaking. A little bit make it a little bit more easier for uh, people who don't. Yeah, why don't they do that? The English feel to it. But it's yeah, like, it's just like this OMG. fucking dude walking around. <laughs> LMAO. <laughs> and then Jesus LMAO'd. He's just walking around like fucking preaching at everybody all goddamn day. Like, how is it even an interesting story? Like, briefly, Satan's in it, and that makes it interesting. And then him getting fucking crucified is pretty fucked up. And then basically the book ends. Like, Well, isn't there hidden chapters that no one knows about? I hope so. No, I know so. Well, that was the whole thing with the Bible. There's, there's, right? hidden, there's, there's books or parts of it that the, the – what's it called? The, the Vatican? Get it. Hold on. Overturn back. There's stories that have not been released to um, the population. Why not? Obviously, those are stories that could um, cause a lot of problems, I would imagine. So yeah. what do I do? Lost Bible path? Versus There's lost. a chapter that says gay is a okay, and they they excised that. Mm. Also, it's you know <laughs> it's obviously it's been reinterpreted, written and rewritten by kings who want to fucking leave shit out or exactly. add shit. It's it's like you know it's who the fuck knows what to believe, and that's why anybody who takes it literally has to be fucking mentally retarded. I don't know, it's man. The, it's the it's a great um, message, though, wouldn't you say? There are several really solid messages within many religions. Yeah, yeah but George Carlin fucking summed it up better than the Bible did. That fucking speech, you remember that? Yeah, what was it? Again? Oh, my God. Hold on. I want to look it up because um, he boils down the Ten Commandments in a fucking per- – better than the Bible ever did. Uh, let me see. Here it is. Do you feel that people who uh, – no, I know for a fact. I know this is a stat that's true. People who don't believe in any kind of spirituality or religion are unhappier than people who do. The, no, I, I I believe that and I've, I've said that before. I think that I am missing out on something by having no faith whatsoever. Yeah. I think it's a useful thing for people. Um, but I just think that I, he, we've we've wielded it the wrong way. Well, I know why I'm not fucking religious because it was so fucking boring as a kid. Like they made it horrific. You know, like my parents would be like, all right, let's go. You got to go to Sunday school. That's not enough. Now you got to sit through church. Hey, guess what? That's not enough. Now we have to go to a fucking hour long (laughs) fucking social hour where people drink fucking coffee and eat crumpets and you're just like – you're just waiting to leave. That's a fucking – Sunday school started at nine. You didn't get home until one. <laughs> I'm like a fucking Quaker. <laughs> and by the way, everything that's fucking fun in life, you're not allowed to do. Right. You are allowed to do it, but just with, you know under the, the the law of God, though. Like if it's your wife, you can do some of those things. Not all of them. Yeah, but mm-hmm. <laughs> not all the things you want. Not the really fun stuff. What is the, what does the Bible say about stooling? You know that you know that would be that's the devil's fucking It's the devil's playground back there. <laughs> that's the, that, that's the, that's definitely fucking you know you know that you're, you're, yeah. you're going down the wrong road. Yeah, I don't think anywhere in the Bible it says give up the ass. <laughs> All right. So that's well, it. So, well, next week, 300, right? If yeah. Fucking, next week is 300. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, we put it to the test. Oh, we, we, everybody it's like so Sunday much. school for fucking that you were just yeah. talking about now to get to, to get through this, to get the 300. Yeah, I yeah, bet you some are, people like it. People like, so do I got to sit through a fucking coffee and biscuit social hour now? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get a fucking crump kit out of this. No. <laughs> oh, well. We kept it real, man. Yeah, it not every real week's a fucking yuck yuck fest. Well, next week will be though, right, Q? Can, what's, can you give any teases for three hundred? I mean, do you want me to say that wedding bells will chime? You can. Well, everybody knows you that. You already said it, so. <laughs> All right, but we can we can cut that out though. No, I don't think we're editing anything. All right. Well, then I will say, uh, you know, dust off your tux, ants. You're gonna want to listen to this 
in your finest clothes. It's everything. Whatever you hoped it would be, it's going to be that. It, I more. think it'll. I think it'll come close yeah. to what you hope it will be. I don't think. I don't think it'll. Ex, I don't think it'll meet everybody's expectations. I think it's. I've seen some expectations that may be a little outlandish at this point. You know that it's going to uh, be better than like I don't know every season of Breaking Bad. I've heard someone say, <laughs> oh, or wow. or as 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 funny as. Um, I don't know. What are some funny I sell comics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sell comics represents at the at on episode three hundred. Mike mm-hmm. and Ming are there. Uh huh. Um, on all star cast, all your favorites. Cast. You want you want to you want to drop? Who, oh, we already did. We already told. I think we did. Yeah. Sal is on it. Um, That's right. There's brand new games that are not derivative of one two three you <laughs> fucking cocksuckers who fucking want to use that as a, a slag they're, like, they're already gearing up to fucking be like well uh, uh, uh. i don't even think there's a one true three-esque game in the get em no games. all and i and yes it's get em heavy but i think Deal we use it. them the right way though I mean, he's getting married. It kind of has to be get him heavy. <laughs> It'd be strange if it wasn't. Yeah, you know, I've seen a lot of complaints about there's too much get him. Really? I, I have found the opposite, that a couple people complain, you know, uh, using get him too much. And I say, no, measured doses. I think we use a get him is there exactly as much as get him needs to be. I mean, how the fuck after you got after you guessed what he was thinking last week? Can anyone be like, get him the fuck out of here? Oh, I, that I've was seen, amazing. I've seen it. That was amazing. Oh, well, fuck you then. <laughs> Seriously. We uh, we should mention that uh, the Zippos are back on sale, right? Uh, I believe they are. They yeah. may be out of stock already by okay. now. I mean, TSD merch is flying. It really is. At a, at a rate that's, um, you know, it's... I don't go anywhere without the Zippo. Yeah, I see you yeah. flicking it right now. I'm a di- I just have it. This I have both of them, and I'll alternate on days which one I carry around with me. Oh yeah, according to your outfit. No, just just my mood, my whim of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you use it for? You don't smoke, right? No, I don't smoke. But uh, you know what like I caught ho- smoking? He likes homeless people. On do fire. you know who I fucking caught smoking? Who, Mike? Mike. Well, he smokes cigars, right? He was out in the fucking back back by the dumpster smoking today, and I couldn't a cig. Believe it. Uh, it was brown. No, it's a cigar. cigar. Yeah. Oh, wait. Was it mellow? <laughs> <laughs> was it one of the PAs? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was out smoking a uh, – uh, yeah, I guess it was cigar. You didn't know he smoked a cigar? OK. Not only does he smoke cigars, but he's become addicted to cigars. And I have it on good authority that an intervention was staged. No. No. Because he's addicted to cigars. All right. So why, you know why it didn't fucking work? Because why, how is there an intervention and I'm not there? Yeah. How well, they was your intervention when I'm not right. there? They didn't know. Who was there? I think it was his wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> it is odd that you weren't there, too. <laughs> the fucking, the Tony Robbins of Red Bank. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he's still smoking like a fucking like a smokestack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? There was a real intervention? And it still didn't work? That's what I heard, yeah. The, the, Wait a minute. The, so really, wife and kids were like... Sat him down and it, it, it and did. kids were like, we don't want you to smoke, like we we don't want you to die from, uh, I guess, lung cancer or whatever. Whatever isn't what do you mean or whatever uh, isn't that it? You know, or if he lights himself on fire, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what whatever sm- cigar smoking could do to you. And uh, he was like, I'm sorry, but I it's this, more important to me this. than you. I don't know. Yeah, he put a cigar out on one of the kids' <laughs> legs. <laughs> <laughs> are you be, are you fucking with me? No, I I swear, I swear, this is what I've heard. He said he told you there was an intervention. He didn't tell me. I heard from a, another source, a reliable source. Uh, Chen? Who, you know, I'm not going to name names, but he seemed gleeful. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So even his podcasting partner wasn't at the intervention? No. Nah. Wow. No. Nah. I would no, think no that, Ming, no Walt. It, it, it's crazy to think it. <laughs> I would. I think it would be more powerful though if we were there because then, it then it's really like, whoa. Well, you're going to be working with him tomorrow. Yeah. Take up the cause. Save the man. Like we're doing podcasting tomorrow for the TV show. Do you think like right before we start, we'd be like, look, everybody gather around, Mike. We love you. <laughs> and we know that you're out smoking cigars by the dumpster in secret. And we need you to know that th- th- this can't go on. We admit we would love you too much and we don't want to see you in, you know, get sick because you are the most important person. 
He is, though. I mean, how the fuck? Why is In what regard? Cigars? Wait a second. Oh, that was, that was his wife talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. If my if my something was to have the mic, then it's just you and get him in this store all day together. Yeah, yeah. that can't happen. Yeah. So, so you're right. You, you are the most he important, is the most yeah. important <laughs> person. Wow, man. I why why yeah, would he, he start is. smoking cigars? I don't know, man. The fucking talons of the white owl have him in his grip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say they're probably going to start the movie soon, right. guys. We so, should we should head over. Yeah, know, check out yoga hoses. So uh, tweet Mike Zapsick uh, at Mike Zapsick mm. and let's back him. A, yeah, let's have a virtual intervention. Nice. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Hashtag um, most important guy. And yeah, and and tell Mike to stop smoking uh, cigars. Uh, we love him. Tell him, Steve, Dave. <laughs>